The Johnson Wax Program. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Company with Jim Jordan as Fibber, Donald Novis, The Four Notes, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with I Gotta Get Some Shut Eye. Here's an announcement of interest to every housewife. The sponsors of this program are making you a real bargain offer. For a limited time only, you can buy Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat in special giant size cans for the same price you usually pay for the regular pound and pint sizes. These big cans are one-third larger, giving you one-third more wax or glow coat at no extra cost. Now, the supply of these special giant size cans is limited. So to avoid disappointment, <clears throat> we urge you to go to your dealer in the morning or phone him and buy several cans of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat at this money-saving price. House cleaning days are near at hand, and you'll certainly want to have both wax and glow coat ready for convenient use. So get a supply now while you're offered one-third more for your money. These special giant size cans are on sale at hardware, grocery, paint, drug, and department stores. See your dealer tomorrow without fail. Fibber's memory has been getting very bad, though we don't know why it should disturb him, as he's done nothing worth remembering. However, he's decided to take the famous Gildersleeve memory course. And here, talking to the Gildersleeve representative who has just delivered the sample lessons, we find Fibber zing went the string on my finger, McGee. <laughs> You say this here course is bound to give me results, eh, bud? Oh, it certainly will, McGee. I'm a Gildersleeve graduate myself, and I know. Oh, you are, eh? By the way, what was your name again? It slipped my mind. Uh, Dalrymple. Cyrus L. Dalrymple. <laughs> well, look, Cy. Uh, just what is the principle of the Gildersleeve memory course? In one word, association. Association. Linking words and ideas. Mm -hmm. For instance, you meet a man named Pike. Okay, where do I meet him and what time? Uh, I'll, I'll wear a red carnation, so... No, 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 no. This is just for instance. Oh, I catch on to it. Now then, McGee, you meet this man, Pike. And what do you associate the word Pike with? Fish. Very good. <laughs> now then, every time you meet this man, your mind produces the mental image of a fish. So how would you greet him? I'd say, hi, walleye. <laughs> No, no, his name is Fish. Oh. Uh, no, that isn't it either. <laughs> well, anyway, you get the idea, McGee. Now, what is my name? Your name? You got a bad memory, too? <laughs> come, come, I know my name, of course. But do you know it? I told you less than a minute ago. Well, let me think. Shucks, can you beat that? Well, of course, I ain't started the lessons yet, bud. <laughs> <laughs> now, turn your back to me a minute. Huh? That's it. Uh, uh... One, two, three. Okay, turn around. All right. Yep, I remember your face. <laughs> that ain't bad for a start, is it? Now, listen, McGee. My name is Dalrymple, Cyrus L. Dalrymple. Now then, what do you associate with the word Cyrus? A slingshot. A slingshot. <laughs> a slingshot? Yep. For goodness sake, why? Well, I had a cousin named Cyrus, and when we was kids, he hit me with a slingshot right behind the barn. <laughs> Well, all right, if that's what you associate it with. Now, uh, what does Dalrymple recall to you? A slingshot. Uh, again? 
Why, certainly, Dalrymple makes me think of Cyrus, and Cyrus makes me remember the slingshot. No. <laughs> Say, I think I'm beginning to catch on to this here stuff, bud. You leave them sample lessons here, and if I like them, I'll take the complete course. Splendid, splendid. <laughs> and when you complete this course, mark my words, your memory will be just as good as mine. <laughs> well, goodbye, McGee. Good day, slingshot. Uh, <laughs> Dalrymple? Oh, yes. Slingshot L. Dalrymple. No. <laughs> Hey, Buck. Uh, yes? You forgot your hat. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose even Einstein gets his check stubs balled up now and then. Now, let's see these lessons. Hmm. Everyone is born with a good memory. Oh, yeah. When you dream of falling, that is a racial memory. You are remembering something that happened when our ancestors were leaping from limb to limb of the trees. I wonder what he means by that. I need a tree surgeon in my whole family. So long. Er, no. I forgot again. Come in. Oh, oh, Mr. McGee. Oh, man, I'm so glad to find you at home. Hi, Uppy. What's on your mind? Um, tell me, Mr. McGee, are we, uh, are we alone? Are we alone? <laughs> Why, Abigail, I didn't know you cared. <laughs> Why, please, Miss McGee, I wasn't speaking from a romantic point of view. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, you silly boy. <laughs> well, now, seriously, can anyone overhear us? Well, either way I answer up, you or Johnson's wax is going to be unhappy. <laughs> I hope we're being overheard. <laughs> Folks, don't listen for a minute. Uppy's got something confidential she wants to tell me. Go ahead, Uppy, quick. Well, uh, possibly you know, Mr. McGee, that I own the famous 10-carat Rajah diamond, and I was too late to get it back to the bank vault before it closed today, and I'm simply terrified to keep it at my home overnight. Would you keep it for me, please? We Oh, now, wait a minute, Uppy. Am I the only one you can trust with it? Well, no, no, not exactly, Mr. McGee. <laughs> Dear Horatio, offered to sit up all night and guard it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but I couldn't have the poor boy losing his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Say, don't let that guy guard no diamonds, Uppy. His old man was a crook, and he's a jip off the old block. <laughs> now, please, Mr. McGee, Horatio always speaks well of you. Horatio K. Puma speaks well of me? <laughs> Actor. <laughs> Why, of course he does. Why, only last night he was saying that if you and he were lost in the woods with only a knife between you, he'd let you have it. <laughs> now, I thought that was very noble of him, really. Yeah. I think I get the point, Uppy. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, here's the diamond, Mr. McGee, and thank you so very much for keeping it for me. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Look at that diamond. What a hunk of ice. <laughs> Looks like Sonia Henney's backyard. Uh-oh, I better hide it quick. Where will I put it? Uh-oh, I'll drop it in this glass of water. They'll think it's an ice cube. Ah, it's a good thing I thought of that. Come in. Hello, Fibber. Say, do you remember the song you asked Don Novus to sing? No, I don't, Billy. My memory's terrible. What was it? I found a million-dollar baby in the five and ten cent store. Did I ask for that? Is he going to sing it? No, we didn't think it would be good judgment during income tax week. Oh. <laughs> What's he going to sing, then? Penny Serenade. Oh, well, that's quite a discount. <laughs> well, go ahead, Billy. Folks, Don Novus singing Penny Serenade. Take it, the, the kid. Once I strayed neath the window of a lovely, lovely lady, and she smiled while I softly played my penny serenade. can hear it for a penny, see, 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 just a penny serenade, in her eyes shone the tender dawn. 
dawn of love and sweet surrender. As for me, in my heart I played a lover's serenade. See, 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 hear my love song for a penny. See, 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 just a penny serenade. In a dream so divine she was mine No word had been spoken When I woke from my dream she was gone My poor heart was broken Still I pray That wherever she may be She will remember In her heart She will always hear my penny serenade. See, see, you can hear it for a penny. See, 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 just a penny serenade. Just a penny serenade. Just a penny serenade. Folks, that was a charming little copperetta entitled Penny Serenade. Beautifully sung by Donald Duck, or no. I'm a novice. That rat my memory. Better get busy and study my lessons. Guess I better lock the doors and windows if I'm going to study with a ten-carat diamond in the house. Anybody? Hello there, Johnny. Remember me? <laughs> yes, I remember you. <laughs> You're old Addison Sims of Seattle. <laughs> How'd that big deal in Peruvian peanut butter turn out? Or was the issue spread too thin? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Never mind, I was just practicing my memory course. Matter, Johnny? Getting kind of forgetful? Always been forgetful, old-timer. Why, even when I was a kid in college, I was the despair of old Professor Knott. So just to please him, I left school, saying as I departed, I'm sorry I can't remember things, so just try and forget me, Not. <laughs> Forget me not, McGee, I was known as in them days. Me? <laughs> Forget me not, McGee, frankly a fearful flop at taking a friendly familiarity with folks' faces, frequently frightened that my family would find my faculty for flip flights to fancy was a false front, forever fumbling for a formula to facilitate the free flow of folk with phrases, and finding a fleeting flame as the forgetfulness fellow who ever poozled his facts and figures from the frigid fields of the far-flung north to the flooded flats of the front of the <laughs> Johnny, but that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> the way I heard it, one feller says to the other feller, say, say. <laughs> I see where this here Sally Rand is operating what she calls a nude ranch at the San Francisco Fair. That so, says t'other feller, with his eyes bugging out. <laughs> Did she get out any invitations? No, nope, says the first feller. Slapping his leg? Just a bare announcement. <laughs> I was out there to take a look, Johnny, and you could tell it was cowgirls, all right. There was chaps hanging all around the walls. <laughs> Nude ranch, eh? No wonder they're holding that fair on island. Everybody, everybody wants to land in a seaplane. Wow. Now, let's see, where was I? Oh, yeah, lesson number three. Visualize your thoughts. Form mental pictures and by association... Hello there, Fibber. Oh, hi there. No, no, wait a minute. Your name is right on the tip of my tongue. Say, what is this? You know my name. <laughs> Sure I do, but let me think of it myself. I can recall it by association. He's got something to do with floors. 
<laughs> he sells something that prevents scratches, scars, and marks. Marks. Harpo Marks. Harpo Wilcox. Hi, Harpo. <laughs> Say, will you talk sense? What's this all about? I'm taking a memory course, Harpo. Wonderful, too. See how easy I remembered your name with just a little effort? Well, the lessons haven't done you much good so far. Here, let me test it a little further. Okay. Now, what have I said ever since we've been on the air? About our product. About our product. Well, let me think. I know it was something favorable. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you usually say something about how, uh... How is it to use? Watch your grammar there, Harpo. <laughs> You mean, how is it to you? No, no, to use, U-S-E. Oh, well, let me think. I believe you always say something kind of childish about that there. No, I don't either. I say that blow coat is so easy to use that a child can apply it. Now, what do I say about there being no need for so-and-so and and -and so-and-so? Which two so-and-sos you mean, Mills and Novus? (laughs) No, no, no. I mean, where I say there is absolutely no blank or blank. No rubbing or buffing. Right? Correct. Uh Now, fill in these blanks. Just spread a little... Sweetness and light? (laughs) No, no, no. Glow coat. Just spread a little glow coat on the floor or linoleum with the long-handled... Frying pan? (laughs) No. The long-handled applier. Then wait. How many minutes? Oh, what's the difference? I ain't no hurry. (laughs) Twenty minutes. Only twenty minutes till the glow coat dries to a beautiful... Beautiful what? Housewife? (laughs) No, no, no. It dries to a beautiful mirror-like what? Let me think. Dries to a beautiful mirror-like, uh... Finish! I'm trying to if you'll leave me alone. (laughs) Beautiful mirror-like, uh... Finish! Dad Raddit, quit nagging at me. (laughs) I nearly had it there once. (laughs) Oh, shucks, I give up. So do I. Goodbye. I hope the sponsor didn't notice he went out without giving his sales talk. <laughs> now, let's see. Lesson number three. Names of objects may often be associated with... Hey, what was that noise? Who's there? Nobody! <laughs> Thank goodness for that. <laughs> yes, I'm just nervous. Having that big diamond in the house, and they say there's a bunch of crooks in town, too. <laughs> Uh Uh-oh. Sneak thieves. (laughs) Who is it? You're right, it's a burglar. Burglar. A robber. (laughs) That makes the dad rather much noise. What you trying to do, make me conspicuous? Yeah, I've got you covered. I've got you covered. No monkey business now. Raise your hands. This is a stick-up. Did you say stick up or hiccup? Come on, get your hands, get your hands, get your hands, get your hands stick them up. Okay, but if you keep jerking like that, be careful. That gun might go off. Oh, no, it won't. I got the, I got, I got the safety catch on. I think. <laughs> you think? Well, don't you know? Well, I'm not positive, positive, positive. I'm not sure. Say, are you familiar with, familiar with firearms? Well, yeah, fairly. Give me that gun, and I'll tell you if you got the safety catch on. Well, uh, you promise to give it right back? Certainly. What do I want with it? You're the burglar. (laughs) Well, that's logic. 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 Yeah, that's right. Here. Take a look. Well, the safety catch is on, bud, but what you got that cork stuck in the end of the barrel for? Oh, uh, that, that's a, a silencer. <laughs> All right, hand over the Roger Diamond. Oh, I won't never do no such a thing. I ain't got no diamond here. Now, you go away. I got some studying to do. Say, what's the matter with you? You aren't even frightened. You aren't even frightened. 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 Scared. <laughs> of course I ain't. I'd be silly to get scared with my memory. The minute you leave, I will have forgotten all about it. Incidentally, you better do something about them hiccups, bud. How'd you get them? Oh, my kid brother. He gave them to me. Oh. Are they contagious? Oh, well, no. But but he put some Mexican jumping beans with my bicarbonate bicarb- bicarb- so- soda mint tablets. Well, I'll be gone. Good night. Good night. Good night. So long. <laughs> well.
way that guy jerks, he could get a job as a chauffeur on a pogo stick. <laughs> well, folks, while I study up on my memory course, Billy Mills will accompany the four notes singing, uh, singing... Oh, shucks, there I go again. Hey, Billy, I forgot the number. Good heavens. Oh, yes. The four notes singing Blue Skies. <laughs> Take it, kids. <laughs> If you keep singing like that, I'll have to raise your salaries if I didn't have such a terrible memory for little things like that there. Now, let's see. I better check up and see if that diamond is still in that glass of water. Yep. At least I remembered where that was. Now for lesson number five. When hearing a stranger's name for the first time... Ah, oh, there. Good evening, Pivot Two. Oh. oh, hi, Boomer. What can I do for you before you do me for something? I come on an errand of mercy, Scatter Skull. Yes, yes. Mercy, what an errand. I come to relieve you of the responsibility of keeping the Roger Diamond at the suggestion of my dear Abigail, Mrs. Uppington, to you, hoi polloi. Oh, yeah, that's what you say, Boomer. But I don't give that diamond to nobody but her, understand? Come, come. Let us not bandy words. Hand over the sparkler, prune pit. <laughs> Must I resort to violence? <laughs> well, that's a nice resort if you can afford to stay there, Boomer. <laughs> What's your authority? Authority? The authority of the man who expects soon to be joined in matrimony to the dearest girl in all the world. Or hadn't you heard? <laughs> be very glad to have you at the ceremony, Freckleneck. <laughs> you can be a brakeman on the bride's train. <laughs> the diamond whistle stop. The diamond. Come, no, come. Nothing doing. Not unless you got a note from Mrs. Uppington authorizing me to give it to you. Why, certainly, certainly. A note. You betcha. I have a note right here, someplace. <laughs> Where I put that note? Here's a beautiful pigskin wallet I found in the gutter with a drunk lying on top of her. <laughs> Small wire tapping outfit. Tap on the wire has saved me many a tap on the shoulder. <laughs> Come on, Boomer, quit stalling. Let's see the note. Oh, yes, the note. I put that note. See, here's a set of false teeth. I'm training them to snap at pickpockets. <laughs> Periscope for looking over transoms. Very handy to locate house detectives when checking out of hotels. Look before you leap and peek before you pack. Six keys to post office boxes. When I get one more, I'll send them to Jim Farley. <laughs> Seven keys to ball pay. <laughs> and a check for short beer. Well, well, imagine that. No, no. <laughs> I thought so. Imagine my embarrassment. 
Well, I must be off. Have to see my lawyer about getting a rubber check vulcanized. <laughs> Good day, Chimney Pop. Ah, good old Boomer. He was born in the lap of luxury, but she stood up. <laughs> uh, let's see now. That's number six. You can train your memory. To... Oh, now, what the... Come in. Oh, oh, Mr. McGee. Oh, hi, Abby. Well, I just got in touch with my banker, uh -huh. and he's consented to open the bank vault for me so I can put my diamond away. I'm so sorry to have troubled you, really. Oh, that's all right, Uppy. Have a chair while I try and remember where I put it. Oh, gracious. Don't you remember where you put it? Well, no, but, but don't worry, oh. Uppy. I've, I've taken five lessons in my memory course now, and I won't have no trouble with it. <laughs> now, where did I put that diamond? Diamond, diamond... I wonder if Oh, I... Mr. McGee, oh, please. Oh, now, if you couldn't find it, I should... Oh, it would be so... Oh, oh, I feel so faint. Oh, oh take it easy, Eppie. Oh. Here, here, uh, drink this glass of water. Oh, no. <laughs> Mr. McGee, oh, my... <laughs> oh, not so fast. There, there. Now you've made me swallow the ice and all. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just take it easy, Uppy, till, till I remember where I put that diamond. Oh, try, Mr. McGee, try. Oh, I'm so worried. Okay, okay. Now, now let me think it out by association, oh. according to lesson number two. I'll visualize it. A diamond makes me think of a ring. A ring, a bell. Bell recalls a church. Church makes me think of a wedding. Wedding. Honeymoon. Honeymoon. Niagara Falls. Falls. Water. Water. Glass. Oh, my gosh. Oh. oh, Mr. McGee, why do you look at me like that? Puppy, are you on a diet? No. Well, this would be a good time to start. Why? You just swallowed ten carrots. <laughs> Weber will be back in just a moment. But now we want to remind you again of the special bargain offer on Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat now being featured by your dealer. By acting at once, you can get Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Glow Coat in big, giant size cans containing one-third more than the regular pound and pint sizes. You pay not a penny extra for these giant cans, and you get one-third more for your money. Don't miss this opportunity. The giant size cans are going fast, and when they're gone, there won't be any more. During the past week, thousands of women have taken advantage of this bargain offer. You'll be money ahead if you get a supply of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat during this special sale. Make a note of it now, and ask your dealer tomorrow for Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat in the giant size cans, which give you one-third more at no extra cost. Folks, we just got a report from the hospital that Mrs. Uppington and the Diamond are both doing well. <laughs> I sure am glad I decided to do something about my memory. <laughs> I'm like the guy who joined the girl to forget the Foreign Legion. <laughs> hey, Fibber. Huh? Fred Allen used that one weeks ago. Oh, oh, but that ain't the point, Harpo. I remembered it. <laughs> Good night, folks. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night when we'll have another visit from our old friend, Zazu Pitts. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.